Hi, and welcome to Threat Track Essentials, where we are going to take a look at some everyday cybersecurity lessons that we can learn from this week's Threat Track stories. I'm here with Stan Norilov, who is on the show this week. How are you doing, Stan? Doing very well, thank you. Great to have you here. Now, you brought us a really interesting story about some very sophisticated malware. Tell me about it briefly. Well, this malware is sophisticated because of how it tries to hide um, from virus, uh, antivirus uh, mechanisms or from the operating system and even from the user. It actually goes after the antivirus software. Does it try to shut it off? It does. Uh, it goes after Windows Defender predominantly, uh, but also uses the technique to prevent uh, different AV software packages from getting their updates. So what do people need to do to protect themselves from this kind of malware? This particular malware strain um, initially spread through um, um, possibly through drive-by downloads. You visit a website, a legitimate website even, you might see some advertisements and things like that, but hidden in something on the page, maybe the advertisement or maybe something else, uh, might be illicit content that you weren't expecting and your browser wasn't expecting. And that might trigger the malware to download and. Uh, install itself on no your matter computer. What, even without clicking on anything yeah. or doing anything, right? Exactly, even without clicking on anything at all. Um, that usually happens if you have like an outdated version of a browser um, or you don't have like any uh, proxy protections in place to, you know, where you can just go to anywhere on the internet. So what do you need to do places. then? Uh, update your browser? Um, so as a matter of course, you should always be um, updating your browser. I think a lot of the latest browsers now, they just auto update themselves. So you want to make sure that you haven't disabled that feature accidentally. Um, you might also want to install some browser extensions like security browser extensions that check the kinds of websites you go to and maybe block some kind of content. Um, maybe your AV software might already offer that and definitely have some kind of antivirus protection um, on your PC that's looking for threats. Um, you may even want to enable, um, depending on how paranoid you are, you might want to enable the most rigorous checking um, that's available. Sometimes you're able to tune um, the, the, your AV software. So you might want to kind of tune it all the way up uh, to detect as many threats as possible, to block as many threats as possible. Um, and definitely layer defense is always uh, something that you need to do. And what that means is, there's, you know, attackers are always coming after you and they'll always find a vulnerability. But you want to make sure you, you've, you've set up your protections in such a way that if one area gets compromised, you have something else uh, there to catch uh, the exploit uh, from proceeding. So don't just rely on one method of defense. You exactly. multi-layer to do it all. Right. Just the browser extension by itself won't help you or just updating the browser won't help you. You want to make sure you have an AV uh, package or antivirus package or an advanced um, antivirus package running to also detect these things. Making sure you keep it up to date, making sure you always update the operating system, making sure that you're always running as a regular user, not as an administrative user, especially when you're browsing the internet. So malware can't install itself uh, okay. without your permission. All good advice. How about the story that Jim Clausen brought us? That was about, is that a new protocol that's being used to uh, for DDoS attacks? I think it's a protocol that's been around for a while, but it's something that's newly being used um, for DDoS attacks. Um, I think Jim did a study and found um, activity starting in December of last year, um, probably over the holiday break, uh, where this activity uh, spiked up. So what is the activity? So it looks like some devices are basically vulnerable to sending large packets on, uh, I think it was port 3702 UDP. Um, what does that mean? Well, it means some types of IoT devices that you buy might support this protocol. Such as what? What kinds of devices um, are we talking about? I think some uh, of the things I mentioned, it could be like a webcam or it could mm -hmm. be even a printer. Um, it could be really any kind of like uh, network device that's not a regular PC. So tell me what can happen. If you have a device like this and you plug it into your network, basically what it allows you to do it is send a specially crafted like message to it. And when you send it, it sends you a response. Well, because it's using the UDP protocol, anyone can send the message to pretend to be you. And um, they can basically direct the message to go anywhere. This is used for DDoS attacks in a big way. So um, 
basically the way it is used is that there's adversaries out there that are scanning the internet, looking for devices like this that are directly connected to the internet, and then sending them these packets and directing it towards specific devices, which basically overwhelms the bandwidth for that device, and basically um, that's a DDoS attack. So your equipment might be used to cause somebody else's internet outage. Basically. And that's not something that you want. So how do you protect yourself? So in this situation, um, anytime you have any device really, don't connect it directly to the internet um, because uh, you really need a firewall or some kind of a protection between the internet and your devices or the internet and your internal home network, for example. So that, what does that look like at home? That means don't hook the devices directly up to the modem, always go through a router first so you have some kind of yes. protection. If you're at home, definitely go through a router because the router gives you a, a little bit of protection. It, it prevents traffic from coming into your network. And really for these kinds of things, especially devices you have on your network that might support this protocol, that's exactly what you want. You don't want outside traffic coming in and telling your device what to do. You want to be able to drop that at the router. And router generally prevents that from happening. You have to do something special to disable that feature. Um, Another option, if you're a small, medium-sized business, you definitely want to have a firewall there where you can control the policy more explicitly of what you let in, of what you let out. Don't just solely rely on the router necessarily. And Andy brought us a story about uh, another problem with uh, email servers. Tell me about that. Yes, the specific uh, software is called Exim. Um, and basically, some security researchers discovered a vulnerability. So when you're first communicating with this service, uh, you have to send like a hello packet. And during that handshaking phase, if you send it too much data, it can cause a denial of service attack against the mail server. Um, that's, in a way, unfortunately, the best case scenario. Um, the security researchers also hinted that it's possible to create a remote code execution bug, which means- What does that mean? Yeah, it means that you can uh, run some malicious code uh, right on the server. Uh, and it's pre-authentication, meaning you don't have to you type in your username or password or anything like that. You just kind of they can just take it over. Uh, yeah, they can just basically take it over. Now uh, it is a, probably a little bit difficult to uh, create an exploit like that, uh, but certainly uh, not something that's impossible. So advanced adversaries uh, can and probably will do this. So the important thing: make sure that your software is up to the latest patch level. Uh, especially this XM uh, software. And even if you're not uh, running a mail server, that's good advice for anybody, right? Yes. Anyone who's running any service that's directly connected to the internet, make sure you're always at the latest patch level. Today, you know, it's XM. Tomorrow, it might be another vendor um, that's uh, impacted. All right. Well, great. Thanks for being here, Stan. And thank you for watching. As always, you can click on the playlist below to take a deeper look at any of these stories. We'll see you next time.